Hey, welcome back to M Watt. Hey, stand here with Roop, and we wanted to discuss with you a second a phenomenon we call the last rep phenomenon, right? And yep. it really is we're seeing this this interesting thing happen where people are doing their last rep on something, and their body mechanics goes to crap, right? Because it's their last rep, it doesn't matter, right? We're not right. going anywhere else, and we think that one. You're losing lots and lots of work potential because let's say you did three deadlifts and you lowered them all and then the last one you sacrifice or throw your head. What we want people to do is make that last rep complete. If, could you go somewhere else after your last rep or are you just totally sacrificing your shape? So we're gonna give you a couple examples. See if you can clean this up because we think that aggregated over months and months and months, this actually represents a lot of hidden work and also when you're fatigued, yeah. You're starting to groove really bad, sketchy motor patterns. So Rup and I have been working out some good examples. And th this is the first one, so check it out. When we see people deadlift, this, this thing burns us in the gym. Like only 100 kilos on the bar, right? They've tapped and go a ton. And all of a sudden, you know, they're so good. And then they just collapse down to put themselves under load. Instead of taking the chance to either lower under control Right, or at least lower fast right. and maintain the integrity versus some of those flexion moments. When we actually like the loading, what we see actually is that when people are deadlifting really heavy, you'll see that all our friends, even when it's heavy, they're like, ah, and they kind of babysit it down. Because I think that spontaneous unloading is not necessarily great for you. Yeah. You're under a lot of tension, you unload the ping kind of flat part. So that's one example. Roop's gonna give you another example. Yeah, so the other two examples where we see it commonly are the pull-ups and the dips. We get to the dips a second, but on the pull-ups, especially in the world where we do a lot of kipping, you'll see a lot of individuals jump up, do some good kipping pull-ups, and on the last rep, just kind of throw themselves off the bar, neck gone back, shoulders forward, right? So as Kelly's talking about, the last rep is probably gonna be the most important rep in all the work you're doing. Why? Because it's that pattern over and over again that you're gonna feel that your body needs to understand. All right, when shit hits the fan, when things are going really bad, can I still maintain that good rep or can I just fall out of it? And we're trying to get into that mentality of make the last rep better than all the other reps. So that's the neurological pattern that your body remembers. And you said, hey look, if you're going grinding in the gym and you, you don't get your head over on your last rep, like we'll count it. Yeah. Don't sacrifice in a bad position. In fact, what ends up happening is that we regularly say to our athletes, look, if I can't get out of the hole, it's just an isometric position, right? I don't start to wobble and, and drive out. So we should fail in these safe positions, but what we're seeing is spontaneously let going of, of position to get the rep done. It doesn't carry through. It's kind of a, a pattern faulting across movements. Yeah, and I think that's really important. And we go to a lot of gyms in the world, strength and conditioning world, and you talk about here is the kind of notion of task completion. Did you finish the task? And we care about the quality more than the quantity of reps you do. So I'd rather see you finish a pull up in a good position here than try to get that extra couple inches by sacrificing your spine to do so. In fact, um, at the Strong First Seminar, their strength seminar, they test you on a five rep max and you have to count the fifth rep and it has to be a good shape. So you can't be like, we're uh, grounded out of the fifth rep. And what you see, we're trying to do is apply that same thinking to the high level barbell high tension stuff to what seems like low skill stuff, right? You lower yourself down under control, there's more work hidden in there, and we're reinforcing patterns when I'm tired. So take a look, one more example. So the dip, whether it's on the rings or the P-bars here, it's the same exact mentality where you'll see a lot of athletes get a few Come reps on, in. Give us a big worm. Uh, and then on the last rep, they just kind of, uh, kind of throw themselves off before they finish. Didn't lock out, didn't finish, didn't achieve a stable position. So one of the things we've been saying with Yami Tikkanen, last rep, best rep. Yep. You just did a whole bunch of good fatigue, right? A bunch of practice. Might as well make that last one your best one. But really pay attention to the fact that you're probably sacrificing form yeah, in a yeah. position that doesn't even count. Yeah. If I do four of one and then the fifth one looks crazy, oh. it's it's completely different and change, trains different tissues, the whole different thing falls apart. And if you look at it from the competitive community, the last rep of that given day set may actually be what you feel like in the middle of a workout somewhere else after doing 30 other odd movements. So coming into that, treating every rep like your first rep wanting to be as good as all the others is really critical to make that patterning normal. Don't fall into the last rep trap. Make it your best rep.